Welcome back to my YouTube channel on Orthodox Theology. Uh, been away for a while, had a big move. As you see, I'm in a different room. It's because my wife and I moved houses. We made a big move across the city. We're a different subdivision. We absolutely love it. We love our new house. Uh, but big, big, big change. So anyway, want to get back into making videos. And so I thought I would do one on multiplicity and God. Uh, so-called Ordo Theologae, and St. Maximus Confessor. So let's go over, uh, some people might not know what Ordo Theologae is, but um, it's uh, from Joseph Farrell. I will. I have quotes from him, okay? It is something that he admits um, is his own. He made it up. The term Ordo, Ordo Theologae is my own designation. I'm reading it right off the quote here. I'll, I'll pro pro provide all these quotes below. But it is his mode of saying or his, his uh, designation for talking about how we theologize about God. Okay, so uh, going on to read some quotes here. It talks about first and second Europe. I don't really want to get into that. So this all seems kind of uh, ambiguous, but second Europe argues for the divine ubiquity and generalized, generalized philosophical conceptions about God's essence to their generalized characteristics or attributes. And only at the end of its thought comes to historical manifestation and application, the persons. This is its classic ordo theologi or order of doing theology again. So what he mean, what Farrell means by ordo theologi is the order of doing theology. And what he says is uh, classical or Augustinian or Western is essence, attributes, and persons. But the first Europe, this is what he calls Eastern Orthodoxy, the East, um, you know, Eastern fathers. But to first Europe argues from their historical manifestation to their generalized conception. God is, so to speak, ubiquitous because the persons, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit are understood to have done certain things, operations, energeia. And on this basis concludes certain things about the essence underlying the operations which the persons do. This is the classical or ordo theologi, persons, operations, essence. So we have these two uh, forms, right? We have uh, what he calls, uh, you know, an erroneous, right? an, an error of Western or Augustinian uh, essence, attributes, persons. And then he has the Eastern Orthodox correct view, which is persons, operations, and essence. But let's see what St. Maximus actually has to say. And again, we're going to get into multiplicity as well. This is ambigua one. This is the first ambigua, St. Maximus. I'll just read the whole thing and I'll also provide it below. It's only three paragraphs. If while considering the apparent contradiction, O servant of God, you were at a loss regarding the real agreement, it would nevertheless not be possible for two statements to be more unified in meaning than these. For the phrase, the dyad was surpassed, means the same thing as not coming to a halt in the dyad, just as the phrase, the Trinity was defined, means the same thing as the movement of the monad comes to a halt in the Trinity. Now, he's quoting St. Gregory here, who talks about God as a trinity. That's fascinating. We're going to come into that later uh, in another video. But keep in mind uh, this idea of St. Gregory the Theologian, a Cappadocian, referring to the trinity as God. I'll continue here with St. Maximus. For we believe in a monarchy that is neither begrudging of its bounty in the sense of being restricted to a single person. So the monarchia of the trinity is not re regarded to a single person of the trinity. Why? Because the Trinity is the monarch of creation. Nor disorderly in the sense of being poured out ad, ad infinitum, but which is constituted by a Trinity that is equal in honor by nature, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, whose wealth is their identity of nature and the single manifestation of their splendor, and whose divinity is neither poured out beyond these three, lest we introduce a multitude of gods, nor bound within them, lest we be condemned for, posit for po poverty in divinity. I'll continue here, one, three. This is not, however, a casual explanation of the cause of beings, which is itself beyond all being, but the demonstration of a pious opinion about it. Since the Godhead is a monad, but not a dyad, and a trinity, but not a multitude. Good, this part is extremely important. God is a trinity, but not a multitude. God is not a multiplicity. There is no way in which we can say God is a multiplicity. Let me continue. For it is without beginning bodily form or internal strife. For the monad is truly a monad. It is not the origin of the things that come after it, as it 
as if it had expanded after a state of contradiction, like something naturally poured out and proliferating into a multitude, such as the divinity becoming the three modes of itself. Right, the, hypos the hypotheses of the Trinity are modes of the divine essence. There are three of them, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. But it is rather the inherently personal reality of the consubstantial Trinity. This is important. This is very, very important what he's saying. For the monad is truly a monad. I'll repeat this part from St. Maximus. For the monad is truly a monad. It is not the origin of the things that come after it as, it, as if it had expanded after a state of contradiction, of contraction, sorry, like something naturally poured out and proliferating into a multitude but it is rather the inherently personal reality of the consubstantial trinity. So the personal reality of the trinity are the three persons. And the trinity is truly a trinity, not the sum of a divisible number, again, no multiplicity, for it is not an, an aggregation of monads that it might suffer division, but the inherently essential subsistence of the three-personed monad, the three-personed monad, the three-person God, right? This is going to come important in a later video when I go over how some people say that God is not tripersonal because they are insane. The Trinity is truly a monad, for such it is, and the monad is truly a trinity, for such it subsists, since there is one Godhead that in essence is a monad and in subsistence a trinity. This is where we're going to get into now here in 1.4 regarding Pharaoh and his supposed ortho. Ordo Theologae, one four Saint Maximus. If finally, having heard the, the word movement, you wondered how the Godhead, which is beyond infinity, is said to move, understand that movement is something that happens to us and not to the Godhead. For first, we are illumined by the principle of its being. After which, we are enlightened regarding the mode of its subsistence. For the fact of being is always grasped before the manner of being. Thus, the movement of the Godhead is the knowledge through illumination of its existence and how it subsists manifested to those who are able to receive it. That is the end of Ambigua 1. But you see here what St. Maximus says. I'll read it again. For first, we are illumined by the principle of its being. The principle of its being is its essence, its nature. After which we are enlightened regarding the mode of its subsistence. For the fact of being is always grasped before the manner of being. Direct contradiction to what Farrell says, that the supposed Eastern Orthodox is persons, operations, and essence. It actually is nature than persons. That is what St. Maximus says. And I will agree with St. Maximus over an apostate. Joseph Farrell has left the church. He is not Orthodox. Uh, and uh, as my spiritual father told me, if I believed what Joseph Farrell wrote in this book, I too would probably leave orthodoxy as well because it is garbage. So, Ordo Theologe, not only is it totally made up by Joseph Farrell, he admits this. The term Ordo Theologe is my own designation, totally made up. He is completely wrong about the order of which we feel, which we ask questions in theology. Okay. And he is 100% in contradiction to St. Maximus. So the idea of, of uh, persons first is not correct. It is, it is definitely nature, okay? And this makes sense because when God revealed himself to the Hebrews in the Old Testament, he revealed himself as God, as essence, as nature, as I am, 314, Exodus 314, which I've gone over. Again, another important place where St. Gregory the Theologian uses God to refer to the divinity. So he, here we have him, St. Gregory, uh, using God to refer to the Trinity, and he uses God to refer to the divinity. And this is going to become important in later videos. So I'm glad to be back. I'm going to be done with uh, the move. Thank you all, everyone who, uh, who has known about it and who've been praying for us. We are finally moved in. We're finally settled. Uh, we're getting some things out. Um, I've left some teasers for a future video. I'm definitely going to do a video on uh, this um, there are people out there who are giving some a very, uh, what I would call hyper uh, monarchy of the father. Uh, that God only refers to the father, that there is no tri-hypostatic God, that there is no tri-personal God, and they try to couch these statements. Um, that, the, that, the, that the Cappadocians and the pre-Nicene fathers uh, believed all this and that it wasn't until later that it came about. But again, the two quotes I've already provided, well, two of them to, uh, in this video, 
St. Gregory referring to God as a Trinity. And again, in a previous video, I, I used uh, a St. Gregory quote, excuse me, in explaining Exodus 3.14, where he says that God is the name of the essence, the name of the divinity, okay, the nature. So we're going to get into that in more detail, but that will be a later video. And I hope you enjoyed this. Ordefe Gloge, totally I made up. And persons first, totally I made up. It's totally false. It's absolutely against what St. Maximus says. We are nature first. That is what Ambigua 1 says. It's literally the first Ambigua, and it sets the stage for the rest of the Ambigua. You, can't, you cannot really understand the rest of it if, if you want to uh, say that there's multiplicity and uh, that uh, we do persons first. Uh, both, both of these ideas are debunked right in Ambigua 1. No multiplicity in God, nature first. Thank you very much, and God bless.